Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Among the various stories that I've followed where I've done several updates, this is the one that will be the most surprising to many people, that we finally have a potential solution. And it was sent to me by everybody. I've said that before. I was wrong before. I am now telling you I got this story from more people. At one point in my inbox, I had five emails in a row that simply had the subject line, hurts, 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 hurts. <laughs> I thought to myself, you know, maybe I should open an email and see what it says. Hertz to pay $168 million to settle false arrest allegations. This is a story we've been following where Hertz will occasionally have their customers arrested by, uh, they claim, accident, where a vehicle um, is in a customer's possession. They report that vehicle stolen for whatever reason. The police see the car, assume the car is stolen because they've been told it was. They pull the car over quite often uh, in a heavy situation and, and a handcuff people and arrest people. And it turns out that the vehicles were actually rented from Hertz. So, you know, <laughs> it's not going to be good for their business that all this went down. But the car rental company now says that hundreds, hundreds of legal settlements will resolve more than 95% of the claims. And when you're in a situation where you got to pay hundreds of millions of dollars to settle 95% of the claims against you, you might have legal problems. But uh, Will Foyer and Dean Seal wrote this for the Wall Street Journal. Hertz Global Holdings, Inc. said it will pay $168 million to settle 364 pending claims. 364 pending claims related to vehicle theft reporting, some instances of which have allegedly led customers to face wrongful arrest for car theft. Hundreds of settlements resolved more than 95% of the outstanding claims. The company said it does not expect the settlement to have a material impact on its capital allocation plans for the rest of 2022 or next year. The company also expects to recover a meaningful portion of the settlement amount from its insurance carriers. Can you imagine if you are an insurance company and you sell a policy to a car rental company, you know, cover them for various contingencies that might happen in the, in the course of business, and you find yourself having to pay $100 million or more... <laughs> Because they were having people arrested who had rented their cars. Um, I wonder what portion of the policy this will be covered by, but we'll see. Um, meanwhile, the Hertz chief executive said, As I have said since joining Hertz earlier this year, my intention is to lead a company that puts the customer first. That's his intention. He intends to. In resolving these claims, we are holding ourselves to that objective. Well, no, actually in resolving these claims, you're getting back to square one. Because none of this should have happened. And so you actually are going to have some problems with the PR going forward. But the car rental company is based in Florida. And it's for years grappled with allegations that inventory mismanagement issues have caused it to falsely report some of its cars stolen, leading to wrongful arrests of customers for car theft. In April, two months after he was tapped to run the company, this man reversed years of denials by Hertz, saying that some customers had been affected in the past by false theft reports and vowed to rectify the situation for wrong customers. And that's one of the things that I'd like to point out is I went and found an earlier story about these problems uh, from you know earlier in the year. I found the quote from WSVN. Okay, so WSVN TV ran a story. And I'm just going to read you the story that ran back then. In court filings, Hertz says that any claims of systemic failures by the company are meritless and baseless. In court filings, Hertz says that any claims of systemic failures by the company are meritless and baseless. Now, the man who runs the company, the chief executive, says, we are holding ourselves to the objective by resolving these claims, and my intention is to lead a company that puts customers first, and they're paying $168 million to settle the meritless and baseless claims. So something's changed, <laughs> unless they've changed the dictionaries lately. By the way, a dictionary recently said that the word of the year last year was gaslighting. Gaslighting. And gaslighting is often when a person stands there and tells you something that both of you know is false. But they stand there and pretend that what they're telling you is true. And you know they're lying. They know they're lying. They know you know they're lying, but they're, they're gaslighting you. Well, as you can tell, Hertz was gaslighting everyone, including the media, because they put out a, a statement uh, to seven investigators at WSVN and wrote, Hertz cares deeply about our customers, and we successfully provide rental vehicles for tens of millions of satisfied travelers each year. 
While we remain steadfast in our commitment to defend the company's interest against those that intend harm, we also want to do right by our customers. And then they talk about how they offered to settle 60 cases back then, and then they're looking at other claims. But they said, in essence, that these claims were made by people trying to hurt the company. They intend us harm. So that's the gaslighting that Hertz was doing previously. And now they step up and go, oh, we're going to pay $168 million to settle those meritless and baseless claims. <laughs> but now, now they're actually saying there may have been some merit or some base to them. In court and securities filings uh, this year, Hertz said the allegations are an old problem and contained to the company that collapsed in 2020 under mounting debt, stiff competition, and the problems that happened early on in COVID with travel. The majority of the legal claims that's faced related to false arrests were funneled into a bankruptcy proceeding after the company went into Chapter 11 back in May of 2020. So they thought they'd gotten away from a lot of this by simply going bankrupt. But a lawsuit filed in the fall alleged that the issue persisted even after Hertz emerged from bankruptcy in June of 21. So they were hoping to get rid of this, but the allegation is that it kept happening. So five customers alleged in Delaware Superior Court in September that in the preceding year, they had been stopped by police and held at gunpoint for renting and driving vehicles that Hertz incorrectly reported as stolen. Lawyers for the customers did not respond to requests for comment on whether their litigation had been resolved as part of this latest settlement. Court records indicate that Hertz has been granted more time to respond to that complaint filed in September. Generally speaking, you get served with a lawsuit as a time frame within which you must answer, usually anywhere from 20 days to 30 days. It depends on the court you're in, the state you're in, and so on. And so you have to file an answer in which you respond to the allegations against you. And so if they've asked for time to respond, it's one of two things. Either they just want more time to respond, and, and that's just what a lot of you know, places do. But it also could be that they're trying to resolve the case in its entirety so they can eliminate any need for further litigation on those cases. So I'm hoping that's what it is. Uh, I like to see this case get behind us. Um, and, I'd, and I'd love to see the people who were harmed by these actions, uh, even though Hertz claimed they were meritless and baseless, uh, be compensated. And, and, and so let's suppose that you went on a business trip and you rented a car. <laughs> You're driving along one day and the lights go on behind you. And um, you pull over and the officers uh, storm the car as if it's you know, a real severe situation. And they end up dragging you out of the car and handcuffing you. And as you're saying you're curious to know what's going on, they say this car's been reported stolen. And you go, no, it's a rental car. They go, yeah, it's been stolen from Hertz. Hertz told us it's stolen. And you can say, look in the glove box. I got the paperwork. It says it's been properly rented to me. And I, I read one version of this story where the woman who got arrested and handcuffed said, if you pull my cell phone out, I'll walk you through how you can see the receipt that's on my cell phone showing that I properly rented this car. And um, the reason she couldn't show it to them herself was because her hands were in handcuffs. So they handcuffed her, and she's going, I've got the receipt in my pocket. <laughs> and they're saying, well, you know, we got to report the car stolen. And that's one of the big problems here, is that there were people who were arrested who had the documentation to prove they had the right to be in the car. And it still took Hertz some time to get the police to go, oh, you know something? It hurts made a mistake. Because, of course, when someone at Hertz is going through the paperwork and go, oh, oops, um, nobody wants to make that phone call. So I suspect sometime it didn't get made. But they are apparently resolving 95% or more of the claims against them. Some will still proceed. And we'll see what happens. Um, I suspect... That if you were to go through all of these complaints, 364 or more pending claims, and if you were to actually look at the facts of each one and then put them on a, on a graph or a scale or some kind of thing where you'd, you'd, you'd rate them, okay? So the one where the person suffered the least, cop pulls them over, goes, car is stolen. The guy goes, here's my receipt. And the cop goes, okay, sorry to bother you, sir. Have a nice day. That's at one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is somebody who got pulled over, handcuffed, arrested, thrown in jail, fingerprinted, mugshotted, spent some time there. And of course, wherever they were going in the rental car, they never got to. So their life was disrupted in that manner also. So to suggest that we can settle all these claims for just so much per claim is not going to work. 
They're going to have to figure out some way to go, okay, the people who had the lesser things happen to them, you're still entitled to something, but it ain't what the people over here are entitled to who maybe spent a night or two in jail. So what's it worth to you if I said, okay, mental exercise here. I want you to imagine that you've planned a trip. And as an example, pick the last trip you took, okay? So I I think I can tell you that I went to California uh, a little over a year ago, visited Jay Leno at his garage with my father and my brother. And so we rented a car. It was not a Hertz. But let's suppose that I am actually occasionally so off my meds that I I walked up to a a rental counter and rented a Hertz. (laughs) That wouldn't be off my meds. That would be on some heavy meds. But, okay, so I rented a vehicle from Hertz. And my brother and I and my dad are driving through Southern California. And a police officer pulls us over and goes, "Uh, guys, stolen car. Everyone out. (laughs) Now, they're just witnesses. They're presumably not accomplices of mine. And I get arrested and thrown in jail. That probably would have meant I missed my appointment the next day. The appointment the next day was to hang out with Jay Leno and my dad and my brother and go for a ride into Duesenberg. And I've done a video on that. It's on the channel. So if I had missed that, what's the dollar value on that? Spending the night in jail and missing that occasion? Because it turns out that it's quite an occasion. And my father... He's older than I am, and uh, I'm not sure how many other occasions he's going to have in his life to go do things like that. And so, as you can imagine, if I'd gotten out of jail, I don't know, a day or two later, just in time to go home, (laughs) back to Michigan, I'd be kind of hot about that, as they say. And uh, would a couple thousand dollars compensate me for that? Oh, no, 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 no. Start adding zeros and commas, my friend. So, that's the thing. So, ask yourself the last trip you took got disrupted because you got thrown in jail. What's that worth to you? So there you go. Like I said, mental exercise. But from the Wall Street Journal, and by the way, like I said, so many people sent this to me. This has to be the most sent story in the history of my channel. Uh, Will Foyer and Dean Seal wrote to the Wall Street Journal, Hertz will pay $168 million to settle false arrest allegations against its customers. The car rental company says the hundreds of settlements will resolve more than 95% of the claims, meaning some claims, are still going forward. We'll see what happens. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Mark my words. Seriously, Mark, I need my words.